Hello, as we have discussed, computational chemistry is the applications of laws of quantum mechanics into the chemistry which is getting solved in a computer. Before going any further, it is a good idea to revise the quantum mechanics a little bit. Now, the quantum mechanics, the modern quantum mechanics starts with the postulates of quantum mechanics. Remember, these postulates cannot be derived or it should not be tried to be justified. We should know about the postulates and we should know about what are the consequence of the postulate. Now the first postulate says the state of a system is completely specified by a wave function and the square of the wave function is related to probability density. And this postulate is related to the work of Max Born which is called a Born interpretation. And in this case this psi star psi d tau is related to a probability and because it is a probability the total value if I integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity it will be 1 if psi is normalized. Now psi star psi d tau is a probability that the particle lies in the volume d tau. So psi star psi is the probability density at a particular point. If psi is not normalized one can always normalize it for a well behaved wave function by using the normalization relation. Now the consequence is that because psi star psi is related to the probability density, it leads certain restriction on the properties of psi. What are these restrictions? Because psi star psi is related to the probability density, psi has to be finite and psi will be zeros at the boundaries, whatever the boundary condition is because remember total probability has to be 1. Psi must be single value because psi star psi cannot have two values because the probability cannot be two on, two on the same point. Because psi is the solution of a second order differential equation that is, that is Schrodinger equation, psi has to be quadratically integrable. And because it is a probability, psi must be continuous function in space because the probability cannot change suddenly as well as the slope of psi that d psi by the space variable dr or dx must also be continuous. So the postulate one only says that psi star psi is related to probability density. The consequence of the postulate is that the restrictions on well behaved wave function. So whatever wave function we will be solving in a computer should follow this restriction. The second postulate says that to every observable in classical mechanics there corresponds a linear Hermitian operator in quantum mechanics. Because my operator is Hermitian, the consequences are that in the measurement of a classical variable operator A satisfying A psi n is small s i n will only give real eigenvalues. There cannot be any imaginary eigenvalues from this solution of the equation. And because my operator is Hermitian, the eigenvector will form a complete set of bases. This is the property we are going to use multiple time in computational chemistry. And the eigenvectors will be orthogonal or can be made orthogonal. So when we say ground and excited states are orthogonal, that just the consequence of the fact that my operator is a linear Hermitian operator. Third postulate goes on to say that in any measurement of the observable associated with operator A, the only values that will be ever observed are the eigenvalues of A, which satisfy the eigenvalue equation. Now what does it mean? So it means that if I make any measurement corresponding to the A, I will get one of the eigenvalues of A. If I know the eigen function and I know the eigenvalue equation, I can exactly say which eigenvalue I will get. If I do not know the eigenvalue equation, I will get one of the ANs, I do not know which one. Now, fourth postulate goes on, if a system is a in a state is described by a normalized wave function psi, then the average value of the observable corresponding to A is given by this expectation value relation. This postulate is very important for property calculation because remember we have an eigenvalue equation only for the energy which is Schrodinger equation. Now if I am interested, I am interested in calculating any other property. Let us say I am interested in calculating dipole moment values. What I should do in that case? So I should take a well behaved wave function maybe from the Schrodinger equation solution 
an eigen function of for the energy operator Hamiltonian and then I will take an expectation value of the dipole moment operator in this case a dash with that corresponding wave function I got from the Schrodinger equation and that will give me the property corresponding property the dipole moment. So, this is the principle is used in the calculation of property in computational chemistry. And the postulate 5 says that the wave function or a state of function of a system evolves in time according to the time dependent Schrodinger equation and that is given by h psi is equal to i h cross d psi by dt. So, this is the time dependent Schrodinger equation. Now, in cases where h does not contain time explicitly, so if my Hamiltonian does not have an explicit time dependence, in this case we can apply the method of separation of variable and separate out the total wave function that is capital psi into a small psi which only depends upon the position and an f which only depends upon the time. I can try to rewrite the equation a little bit by doing mathematical manipulation and that will lead to famous time independent Schrodinger equation h psi is equal to e psi which is we are more familiar with. And of course, there is a time dependent part that is f t is equal to exponential minus i e t by h cross. So, my total wave function becomes psi x a space dependent part as well as an exponential time dependent part. And this form of the wave function often it is called a stationary state. Now, when I say stationary state, it does not mean that my wave function is not evolving in time, it is still evolving in time, but the way it is evolving in time is that when it is evolving in time, my probability density psi star psi does not contain any time part because the exponential factor actually cancels out each other. So, the probability density does not change in time, that is why they are called stationary state. So, even the wave function is evolving in time the probability density will not change with this. So, these 5 postulates of Schrodinger equation we are now going to use to see the solution of hydrogen atom in this case.